now surveil the independent Florida alligator at will. There was a precision deal. We have it all on videotape, and it is my intention to make sure that that tape is available to our parishioners tomorrow noon. That's my plan. That's my plan. All right. Here's the deal. We have a short show tonight, but it's a terrific one. Please respect the stage, including Bill Perry, who is online surfing the internet. Please don't talk over his surfing the internet as he ignores, ignores our show. Okay? What's that? No show, Bill. Go back to the internet. Please do not respect Bill, but do respect the performers who are on the stage as Bill ignores the show by surfing the internet, or you will ruin the performance art. We're trying to do performance art here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gone down the street with a fucking tactical team and surveyed the alligator with a church drone. Don't you see how cool this show is? You cannot get that at an open mic night at Williams. I'm just telling you. We haven't even started the show yet. That's like, oh, and that happened. Come on! If that's the only thing that happened, you should have been like, three dollars to get in, I'll give you ten dollars. And pull my dick out. If you have one. Or pull whatever you have out. Or, or, or put something in there. Am I losing it? Alright, here's the deal. Here's the show. Who are these people? Here's the show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat. Let us first do what we always do at the Tabernacle of Hedonism. Let us have service. Let us commune together in the infinite wisdom, the one and only. Please welcome to the stage the Reverend Angel Dust. The goddess is good. Hallelujah. May the goddess bless each and one of you. Hallelujah! You don't look blessed. Smile! Yeah. Say, I love you, goddess! We love you here in the Tabernacle of Edenism. Hallelujah! May you find a quarter pound of Percocets to snort in the dust. Hallelujah! For the goddess so loved the earth that she blessed it with this really dynamite weed that whosoever should partake in it should have everlasting euphoria. Furthermore, Furthermore. Eve and Adam were in replete nudity, and all ye should be too, because Eve and Adam were innocent. Hallelujah. Loin cloth upon the bond in the shadow of the valley of meth. <laughs> Should be option. Yes, agreed. And profanity is only profanity unless you want it to be. Damn Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Stay away from Dean and alcohol. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What? For it saith, in chapter 21, verse 34, not chapter 11, not chapter 13, chapter 21. Hallelujah. Take heed lest any time your hearts be overcharged with surfactant and drunkenness. And in the tabernacle of Edenism, we like to surfact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are emo, and on drugs, and on spice, and surfeiting, there is only one way to surfeit, and that is to surfeit naked, preferably jumping into a dumpster. Because all sustenance comes from the dumpster. Jamba in, jamba out. Jamba provides. Jamba provides biomass for the new GRU power plant. Hallelujah. Jamba provides stash in the dumpster. Hallelujah. 
Java provides CDs. Hallelujah. CD Hallelujah. players and MP3 players and even laptops in the dumpster. Wow. Hallelujah. Yay. That's my CD. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, well, flower tops sometimes do have seeds. But if you get good stash, it doesn't have a lot of seeds. Ah! Right. Hallelujah. Genius! Now, of course, as we all know, the way to solve the problem, the, problem. the abominable problem, the, problem. the biomass plant problem, yeah. is to grow hemp. Hallelujah! We have 
to what are the best drugs to take. Hallelujah. First, Jill, what is your vote as to the best kind of drug, the bestest in the world, that we should take when we get to the hospice, penniless, out of money, naked, and unashamed? Morphine. Morphine. Morphine and any other opiates. I'll, I'll, I'll change that. Opiates, period. Opiates, period. Hallelujah. Do we have any other suggestions? Hemp. Hemp. Hemp is almighty. Nurse Jill, do you have anything about medical hemp? Anything, any word about medical hemp? You need it? Okay. Intravenous Hemptus Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah! From cradle to the grave, Hemptus Almighty, the cure for everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just wondering, are there any, what about Xanax? No. No. What about snorting Percocets? Maybe snorting Percocets. Yes. Doesn't Xanax relieve anxiety? Yes. In high doses. In high doses. Okay. Oh, so in other words, since people are semi comatose when they go to the the hospice, they don't need Xanax. But if you have them, if you have, if you are in the hospice and you are conscious. Then is Xanax a positive thing? Yes, which might as well go with Valium because it's strong. Holy Benzel. Hallelujah. I have a question. All right. I don't like Valium because it makes me queasy to my stomach. All right. All right. Yes. Wait, when we get to the hospice, naked and penniless, will they try to clothe us? Uh, nurse Jill. <laughs> will the hospital come? What if we decline to wear the hospital gown? Nothing is fine. Is fine. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 The goddess is good. We can die naked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, any other comments on uh, drugs? Uh, it's open for discussion. Intravenous sunshine acid. Intravenous liquid sunshine acid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Contact your local CIA agent for more information. Hallelujah. Uh, any other any other suggestions for drugs at hospitals? When this country is financially and also morally bankrupt. Hallelujah. All right, uh, any, any other suggestions? Amen. 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 A woman. A woman. A lot of opiates. A lot of opiates. A lot of opiates. A lot of intravenous hepatitis almighty. A lot of intravenous hepatitis almighty. Optional Xanax. Optional Xanax. A naked and unashamed. A joint goddess bless them. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming to the tabernacle. Boy, are you guys in for a treat tonight? No, it's a short show. It's an amazing show. Can I dim the lights just ever so slightly? Not too much. That's too much. That's good. <laughs> How do you guys feel about that? Are we good? It's fine. Uh, can I get away? Can I get away under this lighting? It's like Syria. Find a big enough chicken. No, I could get laid in this lighting. Bill Perry said I could get laid in this lighting. What does that say about me? I don't know. It's a mystery. All right. Here's the deal. We work long and hard to get this act here, ladies and gentlemen, so please give it the respect it deserves. If you've ever had to deal with bugs, you know what I'm talking about. Please welcome to the stage 
boat catcher Sam. Thank you for coming, boat catcher Sam. Boat catcher Sam, everybody, now listen carefully. Sir, uh, I think humans 
can really take a lot away from ants because I think we don't really do enough for each other. I don't think we protect each other like we're supposed to, and maybe the argument would be settled a little bit faster about whether we're you social or not. But the ones I have in there, I think, are just normal, I don't know where they are, are just normal little black ants, which are native. Fire ants are actually uh, invasive, so they're kind of bad. But um, a lot of people in here seem to be European, and we're invasive too. Yeah. <laughs> so I just kind of want you guys to think about little ants and maybe not step on their colonies. It. I mean, if you want to take some home, make a little ant farm, or you know, put them on little pins, that's what I do. Um, that would be pretty cool, but I don't know. I just think you guys should think the bugs are cool, and I will be here again and bring more bugs, and I promise they will be more impressive.
when we started, we had four people, and now we have regularly 30 to 50 people every Monday, and we have just finished our 20th show last week. Last week was our 20th anniversary. We, in, in that short period of time, Father O'Brien, George O'Brien's uh, relative there, managed to almost single-handedly, with the power of the church, get rid of the Dove Outreach Center. Yeah. No matter what they say, everybody that's been to this church knows that we were the ones who did that. That's right. Father O'Brien burned in effigy Pastor Terry Jones in his love bowls, and six weeks later, he was gone. Okay, so that's one thing you can be very proud of. Yeah. Number two, we have exposed the alien menace at the Independent Florida Alligator. They're on alert now. That's right. Number three, we have managed to have an all-female show for V-Fest. I don't know of any other open night night that have an all-female show, do you? I don't know of any other one, except maybe maybe it, maybe the ones they do at... Uh... No, I think it's just us, honestly. I was going to say the ones they do at Wild Iris, but... but... I think, I, yeah, I think, I think we did well, that's, that's just a feminist, though. I'm going to be a feminist and not, like, identify well, uh, I'm very proud of the church, and, um, and the church is very proud to welcome any and all who dare contribute on this stage. And we love everybody. And it is my extreme pleasure, and not my pressure, to introduce somebody who's never performed on this stage before, as I understand it. Please okay. welcome to this stage, Balloon Animals.
this show is going very well tonight. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is show 21. We're going to get to 40. Is everybody drunk enough to enjoy it? I know I am. Ladies and gentlemen, our next performers, the Misfits, have not been on the stage in quite some time. But you're in for a treat. Miss Tanya. Somebody who's performing did not get their free drink ticket. Who was it? Ashley. Ashley, here, will you come get it? I'm sorry, Sam, I broke my I mean, Sam. You gotta get that ticket here. All right. Everyone else is happy, straight now. Zombies on Facebook. How about it for Bill Perry, ladies and gentlemen, up here on the internet throughout the evening's proceedings? Fantastic. What's that? No, we put him on the stage because he was interfering when he was up in the front row, and I thought, well, either throw him out or put him like right up in it. Yellow, yellow. All right, it's on. I gotta get off the stage, ladies and gentlemen. The Misfits.
he's been put on the stage as a foremost part of the show. And not only is he ignoring the show, but you guys are ignoring him and ignoring me. <laughs> while just doing whatever you're doing and all the random conversations. And most of the people that talk over the show, generally, 99.9% .9 of the people that talk over the show are people either on my immediate crew or people that work here. The audience either pays attention or gets up and leaves because the people who are on my show are talking and they can't hear the ads. I know! You and me, let's just do a show. I'll perform, you watch, and, and we'll, maybe somebody will pay us. But I can't stand people who ignore people who are trying to get your attention. People who are working so hard and raising their hand and jumping up in the air and doing everything they can I can't hear what you're saying. I'm sorry, I can't hear you with your hat on. Mike McShane is talking so loud. Well, he talks loud, but he's working on stuff. Just a second, Bill. Go back to the internet. I'm trying to pay attention to the guy behind Michael McShane that couldn't hear the show because of Michael. What? What? I can't hear you. His big gargantuan head is in the way. I can't hear you with that hat on, sir. I don't have Um, so this is a 
thank you, Tom Miller, for letting me have AA meetings. This is the fourth one. So this is our one month, everybody. 21 shows. One month anniversary. AA meetings. Um, but for this one, I would I'd like to have a volunteer for this one. Anybody want to play? Anybody need some therapy? No. no. You, me, or we? You, me, or we? Me? Must be you. Well, thank God we have names and we're not all pronouns, right? But if you say me, it's from your perspective, right? It's not me, it's me or me. Okay. All right.
All right, so you and your Je Jewish hetero life partner yeah. have made it to West Palm. Yeah, we, we're in a sexless um, partnership. And, oh, oh, oh. and um, no, I mean, it's fine. Like, it's okay. you know, I have this, like, I'm straight edge, and he's, like, not. And this is, like, a compatible, like, sir. But, um, so we go to this thing, and it's like a convention. Like, people dress up as wrestlers. And I was probably dressed like, like my favorite wrestler, CM Punk, who was <laughs> to the WWE Championship that night. And, one of the main events, and people are dressed like Brian Piper, and they're dressed like stuff like The Undertaker, or Ric Flair, and stuff. It's this really weird, like, convention atmosphere. Okay. Um, and then I'm at the show, and it's like a lot of Miami people, and they're like really homophobic at a professional wrestling event. And it's bizarre. Like, they, like, these two guys hug at the end, and, and uh, you know, because it's like their last matches, pretty much, basically, their last important matches. Did it their way at the biggest show when they're hugging at the end because they're buddies and they're just the guys next to them. Gay, ever a section, sweaty men in tights. So. Um, uh, so I think he's masking his own. I mean, the Miami as a whole, yes, I think so. Because, um, I, incidentally, they were mostly there and Miami was in there. It was like one of the highest growing manias in the last 15 years because Dwayne The Rock Johnson was there, who you might know from. Yeah. Fast and the no, Furious 5 yeah. and the Tooth Fairy. It's a handsome Samoan, that one. He is a handsome <laughs> half Samoan, half something else. The um, Rock. The Rock. Um, the Rock. Yeah, it, it makes, yeah, I can't do the other but it makes a lot of sense that, like, his fellow Miami brethren are really homophobic because The Rock also has a lot of problems with being sensitive to anyone that isn't The Rock. Uh, <laughs> um, like, one time, his, his opponent that night was John Cena, who has also had problems with being sensitive to anyone who's not John Cena or The Rock. Um, and uh, I think John Cena wears these wristbands, like these sweatbands, because he gets a lot of sweat on his wrists. And uh, The Rock said to him, you know, yeah, The Rock said to him that um, he was like, his wristbands were stupid and it made him look like a transvestite Wonder Woman. And he said that on TV. Cheered him like the best transvestite. Yes, and John Cena, he showed like to the transvestite. Um, and that didn't make me laugh, but, but everyone else around me was laughing. Everyone thought that it was the funniest thing ever. Sure. He, he was funny racist one time. He called him a cum pow bitch, which is weird because John Cena is white and like it, they got into an argument where they were like saying the other one had like lady parts and it was a lot, it was like sexism and and then like a year later, he co-opted the Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech on Martin Luther King Day to like talk about how he's going to win a phony fake wrestling title. And that's more of a question you should be asking them. I don't, I don't know. This is a pretty cool story. No, we're not bored. We no, no, no. Uh, this is exciting. That I, um, but yeah, he just, he just does a lot of shit like that. And it's not something I feel like it's just his entire character. I feel like it's something actually about him. Because he makes enough money, he has enough pull, he has enough power of the town to like, say that he's not going to say these things on like, a higher ground, but he doesn't. It really upsets me because he comes in for three months and makes a lot of money and takes a bunch of spots. So, so while you're at the match, is this this is a, all upsetting you? Oh, it's uh, John Cena and The Rock fight, fighting each other in the main event while my two favorite wrestlers fought each other in the match before, okay. and they're like infinitely more talented so, and they don't say a bunch of horrible things. So there's more conflict on the stage, but for you, we've reached anti -group. Right, I, I am done. I almost want to leave. They were both. Yeah. The Rock was introduced by Miami native Flo Rida, who doesn't wear shirts. Oh. And um, then the Rock, John Cena, the John Cena was introduced by Machine Gun Kelly, and it was like Bruce Diddy was there. Oh. It was just a lot of people. So it's becoming a mess. It's a total mess. And okay. <laughs> before that, um, I think. Uh, before that, like they had this big, they called it Mandy Gate. Um, oh dear. Yeah, there was this, there was this character who's this. I think he's also Samoan, or no, he's Polynesian. Um, but he plays the character of like a black, rapping, dancing dinosaur man. Um, there's no adequate way to explain it. He's the Funkasaurus for his play, and his, his song is. Uh, I hope you like this. Do you like this? I like. It's clever anyway. I, you know, I, um, and he, uh, his whole like, theme is like somebody call my mom. It's like this James 
brown sounding song. So then he does the, you know, meet the end of the bit, you know, he finally calls his mama, and his mama is this very stereotypically, like, manny, you know, black, grand Wrong. kind of person. Yes. Like this gigantic prosthetic butt. And like an a, outdated um, stereotype. Right, and they start dancing to this song, and then like an army of identical looking stereotypes come out, and then like 20 mammies are dancing at, uh, at this, at this, the biggest show of this publicly traded company that does get this with Mattel. Um, and they're good people. Um, they do lots of good yes, uh, lots of things. Uh, but you're sticking around? Yeah. You're watching yeah, this well, disaster happen in front oh, of you? Oh, yeah, because, because you gotta stay for the good time. So we've so we reached a conflict with the story, yeah? Yeah. I think it's a conflict with your own morals, right? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean that's wrestling as a whole, like, just it's, it's a reflection of society around us. So it's, it's a lot of the worst sexist, racist, phobic shit. Um, but, and you asked me if I want to write like, it's very important. Why was it one of the happiest moments of your life? Oh, because I got to see my two favorite wrestlers wrestle for something of consequence. Um, and that I've never been wrestling in, and the next time I plan on being there, hopefully I'll be in it. Excellent! So he's taking his favorite memory, and he's making it his future. Facing my fears, and um, as artists, I think that we have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. To be complacent, to be content is our biggest enemy. So the story that I love to tell about my grandmother, she started raising me when I was five. She moved me to this very small town in the south. Um, I don't like to say that I'm from there, so I don't mention it because <laughs> it's gross. Um, so I'm very, I'm very shy, I've been tossed around, I'm only five years old, and I'm, frankly I'm afraid of the dark. It's, it's horrible, the things that happen when the lights go out and I've got to go to sleep. It still does, but I'm five, so it's a, it's a little more animated. Um, but I wanted to make her so proud of me um, that I didn't want to sleep with her anymore. So I was going to sleep in my own bed that night, and she was. She was so proud of me, and she tucked me in, and she kissed me on the forehead and told me how proud she was. And I'm, I feel elated. And the lights go out and the shadows started creeping up on the windows and, and the walls. And I didn't want to lose that approval, um, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. So I decided that I'm not going to turn on the lights. I'm not going to let her know that I'm going to go sleep with her. I'm going to sneak into her bed. So uh, this is like, hmm, probably 1980. So we still got shag carpet in the apartment, so it's nice and furry, you know? And very quiet, and I'm barefoot, and I'm tiptoeing through the dark apartment. And she smoked, and she smoked in bed in the dark. So, so I see her little cigarette butt, uh, cherry, right? Burning there, and, um, and so I see it, I have got my target, and I know where I'm going. And so I'm tiptoeing, tiptoeing, tiptoeing. The second I laid my knee on the bed to crawl in, uh, the, the fist came into oh my, my head. Yeah, she, uh, I startled her. Um, she thought I was an intruder, and she clocked me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a pretty tall woman, and so, you know, I grew fast, and I was a large five-year-old, I suppose. So she clocked me, um, and then, then I saw stars, and I screamed, and my face turns all sorts of colors. Um, but what she said to me was, you see, you don't have to be afraid of the dark, because I'm here to protect you. <laughs> That's my grandmother. So, um, to challenge fear, as Buddha would say, you must make friends with it. Um, 
Jamba grant me the serenity to accept my art when it is good, to take a, the courage to take a risk, fail and be bad, and the wisdom to know it's all subjective. Give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how to follow that. We'll see you next week. Enjoy. Hang and drink with us. Yes, you have something? What do you got? Hold on. Hold on. Stop that music. Just a second. I was trying to close the show, but this is one of those things that that is occurring now, apparently. Bill, are you still online? Yes. Okay, we're good to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I, I, I'm very observant more than, excuse me. Yes. I've tried to process a lot of the things that I've heard here. So I guess really weird it's bits and pieces of conversation that have entered my mind and interwoven. One more, I gotta walk on. <laughs> my understanding is that a lot of people here are involved in theater. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, but I got this southern theater thing uh, that was actually for my roommate in the mail and uh, I saw uh, on the cover it said emotional hangover what are the symptoms and how can actors avoid it so I read it and I thought it was I felt like it applied to me even though I'm not an actor because <clears throat> I guess what I felt like it was talking about was the, the concept of, of character withdrawal which I, I googled it thinking that that's what it was but apparently that terminology has not been coined. Uh, essentially saying that a person that's involved in a, a play or the whatnot can, can practice and get so wound up in being that character from that play that when the play is over, or not the specific play, but the, like, what do you call a series of plays, when they're unable to be that character anymore, they, they can um, essentially get like really depressed, like that they... That's a, that's a for real serious problem in pro wrestling. In pro wrestling? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know. Greg, it's a Benoit. theatrical pursuit. Hey, Greg, <laughs> Boris Karloff used to masturbate his dragon out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I guess this is not going to where I was hoping, but... Oh, yeah. No, no, go on. Go 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 hey, go hey go everybody, so, shut up, all right? It's, it's okay. Shut it's up, okay. for God's sake. Give me a minute. I, I didn't write things down because I wasn't sure how people would react. Um, we react violently to every situation. Yes, yes. <laughs> So, like I was saying, is, is um, shit. For instance, uh, I was speaking to Reverend O'Brien out on the, out on the uh, sidewalk one night. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. And I, I, I part of me wanted to say, hey, George, can I talk to the real George right now? And I felt like there was a certain disrespect about wanting to say that, because, which, you know, is, is the Reverend O'Brien any less real than the, the George that I consider the real George? He's a fraud, dude. Big, fat, phony, classic. And so, I, I felt like it was all tied into this thing I wrote that was Automatopoeia, which 
technically makes this a poetry performance. <laughs> <clears throat> Infinitely, indefinitely, <clears throat> in dice of in identity. So, <clears throat> I, I feel like I'll, there's a really probably eternal question that each soul or person, whatever you want to call it, where you can't decide which you you want to be, or which you you want to attach yourself to. So I was thinking maybe it's it's easier to attach yourself to a fictional character or a character that you've created. And I think in everyday life um, it's probably possible to unintentionally create a character that you want to believe that you are. <clears throat> so for me as a person that knows I need to change to make my life better, I feel like I'm having the problem that I'm still attached to the person I was, to, to all my craziness, all, all my delusions. <coughs> And part of me wonders, is that entirely a bad thing? That, that guy that I need to get rid of, I, I sort of love him. Hey, John! Hey, Greg, man. Wish him well on his way on his journey, but keep his memoirs, keep his books. So yeah. So... How this ties back to you in my crazy brain. <laughs> um, basically, after I saw the movie The Matrix, <laughs> I, I, I felt like it was personally directed toward me, towards me, like asking me, you need to, to come out. and. Like, you are the one. And I never could quite figure out what that meant. I was like, am I uh, an alien, an angel, am I God, am I a reincarnated being? Or, you know, I was just like, I felt like I wasn't just a human. I was something more than that. So thus, naturally, coming here and hearing everybody say, you know, praise Jamba, Dumpster goddess. I, 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 my, my conscious brain says, oh, that's just satirical metaphors, artistry. But then there's the part of me that thinks that maybe there's something like like really real about this, and I'm just being spoken to cryptically. <laughs> so <laughs> that's stated. I might have evidence suggesting that I am the dumpster goddess, <laughs> and show us your boob. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will attempt to create a performance in that vein if you are cool with it. If if yeah. it would help you out. Yeah. 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 That was brave and honest and hardcore. And there is nobody else in the room that can say the last word tonight. It won't be me. It has to be the Reverend Angel Dust. And then we will call it a night and see you next Monday. Reverend Angel Dust, please come to the stage and address your flock. Hey, I can't go anywhere without my Bible.
them and perpetuating the peaceful war, nonviolent war, war partly in the Whitney with a drone helicopter. Hallelujah. All together, all of us walk through the valley in the shadow of meth. On meth and perhaps a few other hallucinogens. And surveyed and put these alligator under surveillance looking for possible clues as to the conductance of reverse UFO technology in coordination with the alien motherhood. Yeah. This, is, this is really straightening everything out. Thank you, Reverend. Well, it's all clear to me now. So, we are going to compile the evidence into the wee hours of the morning, and we should come up with a conclusion by 12 o'clock noon. I'm not doing Hallelujah. Uh, Tom, uh, Deacon Tom, will you be presiding over the final decision? Yes, I will. Thank you. Please keep the world safe from the alien motherhood. Fascism, capitalism are horrible. I agree. Dubitopia is the only way. Hallelujah. So let us all pray Look, uh, for the uh, goddess's prayer. We didn't have the goddess's prayer in the sermon, so we'll have the goddess's prayer now. Our mother, Our mother. who grows the greatest garden in heaven. Under the influence of the domestic that they trim up there. Even under the nose of the alien motherhood. Goddess, is she ever high? actually did go over the dotted line on 6th Avenue. And we actually did go over the dotted line on 6th Avenue. And if she finds anything suspicious, How it got there. We have no idea how it got there. Yeah, we ain't nerds. Yeah, we besides, ain't nerds. Besides which, Jesus is the kingpin. Besides which, Jesus is the kingpin. You cannot indict us. You cannot indict us. We have immunity. The cow pie. Is the cow pie. The rain. The rain. And the shrew. A man. A woman. A woman. A lot of mushroom tea. A lot of mushroom tea. A warm fire in January. A warm fire in January. A joint. Goddess bless everyone. Hallelujah. Yeah. Support us next week. We have justice to prevail. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just one more thing. And I want to send this out to you, Greg, for coming up on stage, saying what you had to say. Shh. It's him again. Isn't it? No. <laughs> Greg. True story. I'm doing religion now. Guy walks down the street and he sees a snake and it startles him. But as he gets a little bit closer, he realizes it was only a stick. 
Was it a snake when he thought it to be one? Embrace mystery as an answer. Good night.